Today I'll be talking about Kingdom Come Deliverance. Now Kingdom Come Deliverance is not a triple A title. I would call it a double A title. It's not an indie title either. It's it's like a mid-budget title production. Now Kingdom Come Deliverance is really interesting because it only became popular exponentially within the last month. I was looking up um, where the game game came from and all of that, and I found out. Oh, um, apparently they had some help from like these uh, funding sources, and apparently the development of the game was uh, it was in development for quite a few years, like like as early back as 2015. I was reading posts on forum, and I'm thinking to myself, wow, that game was like being beta tested back then, and then now it's being released uh, all of a sudden. And yeah, this game. To put it simply, I think it's a really amazing game. A lot of people are criticizing the game. They're doing a whole bunch of weird shit. They're saying, oh, it's not diverse enough. It's a game that takes place in the 1400s. And honestly, I like this game a lot because it feels... Well, of course, I haven't lived in those days, of course. But I, when I, I've read a lot of scriptures, uh, passages, poetry, all of that from those, area, like those eras. And... You know, I would think that it's it, it it tries its best to be a very accurate depiction of what medieval life in like the 1400s or so would be like. I think that you know the characters, it's a balance. I don't think that the gameplay is compromised by being so trying to be so realistic to that period. Um, like how should I say it? It's like how all the characters they're very um. Like Christian, for example, but I mean, it's supposed to be trying to reflect the area of Europe back in those times. Um, like they have a very strange kinds of not old English; they have modern English uh, dialogues, but they'll always say, "Oh, praise Jesus Christ!" before they start talking to you. This kind of stuff. But um, I don't know. I just find it really interesting. This is a game that it's a game without fantasy. So you can almost compare it to like Oblivion which was released back in 2006 but without any of the fantasy elements it's like you took Oblivion and instead you took the game mechanics and stuff and you removed the fantasy, the magic, all of the other races, the fantasy races like and, and you just put it into medieval Europe this is what you'd get. The gameplay is a little bit difficult. A lot of people like to say that it's, it's extremely difficult and yeah it does take a while to get used to. But with all uh, other kinds of these RPG kind of games, I think that the beginning is always the toughest part. Once you get access to the world, which is after the prologue, after the events, I'm not spoiling anything, but after the um, the main events in the prologue, you're free to explore wherever you want. Uh, the game does have mechanics like, oh, you have to sleep and you have to eat uh, food items periodically, otherwise your character will start to suffer. And I don't think it's bad at all. It's it's very relaxed. You can find pots of food um, in most cities, and you can just quickly take a spoonful of that. You, um, the only thing is you will get poisoned if you keep food items, perishable items, uh, in your inventory for too long, so you can't do that. But if you get like food items, you should probably eat them as quickly as possible, and then save the pots for when you like really need to eat food. But those pots are infinite as well. And then you can find so many different beds, and you even get a room of your or of your own after a certain point in the storyline of the game. Well, actually, even after the prologue, you get a bed um, with one of the people who takes care of you. So like sleeping and eating, it's actually not troublesome at all if you explore too far away you can just return back to those places i mentioned get like fed get some sleep and then you can go back to whatever dungeon you were exploring before um so the gameplay mechanics in that sense are not too difficult now some some other aspects are difficult like the lock picking yeah the lock picking um I played this game on the PC, and I think you need a, a mouse to do the lock picking. I so I, I I do understand the criticism with with lock picking if you're using an analog stick um, controller and that kind of stuff. Yeah, it, it is kind of uh, sensitive. It's difficult to explain the lock picking mechanics. However, you can improve a lot of your skills, lock picking included, if you teach your character how to read. So you have to go to one of the outside um, cities, like one of one of the. Um, it's a bit on the outskirts of where you start, so you have to do a little bit of traveling to find, um, I guess, like a former scribe who who will teach you how to like read, 
and then once you learn to read, then you can buy you can buy books anytime, but you can't read them. So once you learn to read, you can read books that you find in chests or you buy the books from merchants, and these books will teach you uh, different kinds of skills. Yeah, lock picking is one included. I know you can learn um, hunting skills, so you can retrieve more items from uh, dead animals if you do the hunting skill books. This kind of stuff. So you can see that like. I wouldn't say that this game is as hard as something like Morrowind. If you put most of modern gamers into Morrowind's setting, like right now, a lot of people, myself probably included, like would have a very difficult time. You'd have to do a lot of background reading on Morrowind's mechanics. You'd have to do a lot of experimentation. It would take you a long time. But I would honestly say this game is more like Oblivion. You can go through it blindly just fine. Um, it might take you a little bit of time, but yeah, you can get through it. So you have to be a little bit careful. Oh, there is one thing I don't like though. One of my main criticisms with Kingdom Come is the save mechanics. You need to buy an alcohol drink and you have to use that to save your game. Sometimes your games will autosave at certain critical points in the game and your game will also autosave sometimes if you sleep. But that's not guaranteed, and that might be a pain in the ass. And your character can actually only sleep for so long. If you try to sleep for too long, the game will stop you from sleeping, actually. So so with that, I was playing it on the PC, so I was able to download a mod that let me save anywhere I want. And I like to save scum, and I'm a bit of a casual like that, unfortunately. And I just love saving, saving so much. And a lot of people are like, what the hell's wrong with you? Stop saving, but... The thing is, I don't save like uh, to to. I don't actually save to experience the different paths of the game. Like, no, no, I just save because I I don't know. It's just it feels safer to me. And then in case I die and stuff, I don't want to go back half an hour. And in some cases, yeah, I would do a whole bunch of quests before I got this mod to save anywhere in the game. I I would I would do some of the quests and I would lose up to like half an hour to an hour worth of progress and you know again it's a pain in the ass you have to go somewhere far and then all of a sudden you have to go back home to sleep and then you have to go back to the dungeon like that's not really fun and then and then because these alcoholic drinks they're limited in supply um you can find them sometimes in uh, chests and all over the place but otherwise if you can't find them and you run out of them you'll have to buy them from merchants and then they're actually kind of expensive more so expensive than you know uh, regular food and, and drink items that you would buy from the merchant so that's that's actually kind of pissed me off a lot so I ended up getting this mod and a lot of mods were available like right the day after the game was released now I think that the developers were saying that they were going to change this so maybe a patch has been released since then but for me I had to quickly download the patch and this patch would give me an infinite amount of those alcoholic items that I can use to see if my game yeah it's a very weird saving mechanic very archaic, and that's one of the big things I didn't like about the game. But otherwise, the game is, is a really a lot of fun. Once, once you have uh, the ability to save more often, I say that because this is a game without fantasy. Uh, you have bows and arrows and you have your sword, but you know, all it takes is actually, uh, from the beginning of the game, all it takes is a couple of hits from a sword to kill you. The prologue is actually kind of difficult because of that, because if you're not careful, you'll actually get, you can get killed by some of the, like, you'll, you can probably sneak around them, but if you're not good at sneaking, and again, you, you don't have any sneaking skill, because this is in the beginning of the game where you don't have any skills developed, so you might accidentally encounter some bandits on your way uh, through the prologue. And you might not, you don't have any help from other NPCs or anything. It's just you and a few of those people. And yeah, it's very easy to die. I can guarantee if you get outnumbered in the beginning of the game, uh, beginning of the game you're going to die. And even if you're one-on-one, -on -one, all it has to take is one, one hit from a blade or a couple of hits from a blade and you're dead. Uh, if you get hit with a blade just once, sometimes your body will be affected temporarily, so like you can't swing or you can't block properly, you can't walk properly. It's actually very realistic like that, but again, it's unforgiven, unforgiving. So that's why I say you might want to be able to have the ability to save more often, and that will help you combat some of the game's more uh, tricky features. One thing I love about Kingdom Come Deliverance is the cutscenes. I love the story of the game. It is a very self-contained, very specific kind of story, but I love the story so much, and I love the cutscenes. One thing I hated about games like Fallout, Oblivion, and a lot of these RPGs is that they wouldn't have, like, cutscenes, and... 
you know. And I guess people don't like it because this game because you can't customize your character to be whatever you want. You're stuck playing as Henry, this this European guy. He's always gonna be white. He's always gonna look the same. But I like that. I mean, I like some people say that you have to be able to create your own character in an RPG, but sometimes. I want to role play as someone who already exists. One good example of a game that failed at this was Xenoblade Chronicles X. People at first were enjoyed, to, like very happy to hear about how you can make your own character and interact and stuff. But a lot of people ended up liking the storyline of the other Xenoblade games more because they would rather just play as a, as like um an actual character. You you know what I'm saying? Like an actual pre-designed character. Because if you have like if you have a character you can create, you can't really make cutscenes that good anymore. And I really love this game's cutscenes, I loved this character, he starts off as a peasant, you can kind of become, you know, more advanced uh, in the kingdoms and stuff, um, you, can, you can solve, like, the big city's problems, you can deal with bandits, you can solve the medical problems, a whole bunch of different skills you can do, and so many quests. The main storyline of this game is kind of short, but it, it's only if you rush through it and you don't want to rush through it because you want to do the side content to get better equipment and to, to grind better skills, so to speak. But the main storyline of the game, and I'm, spoil, I'm not spoiling anything at all, I love the cutscenes as I said, but the problem is that this game is actually not complete. It ends on a cliffhanger, not on a not on a um, immediate emergency situation kind of cliffhanger, but it, everything is just left unresolved, and it ends with um, you going somewhere else to 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 like you know to deal with it, and you know I just didn't like that kind of uh, ending. Um, you know, it was just so many... Yeah, it wasn't like, oh, he's about to fall off a cliff kind of cliffhanger, but it was a cliffhanger where, where you introduce so many plot points and you can't even finish the main um, quest in the game, unfortunately. Like, it's it, that's, that's what I don't like. Like, you're given a main quest to complete throughout the whole game, but no matter what you do, you can't finish it. You have to wait for what they're going to do next, and who knows what the developers are going to do next, if it's going to be in a completely separate game, or if it's going to be an expansion pack, is it going to be DLC? That left a bad taste in my mouth, but otherwise, I really love everything else about the game. The environment is so much fun, I love the dialogue, I love talking to all the characters. Yeah, there's not much uh, voice work, all the voices kind of sound the same, the voice acting is... It's not good, but it's not bad either, don't worry, it's not like, again, I played games since like the 80s, 90s, I'm used to seeing Resident Evil style bad voice acting, so don't worry, it's not like, the voice acting might be a little bit on the bland side, but it's not like bad, if you know what I mean. So, and um, otherwise, like the gameplay mechanics, as I said, yeah, some of it's good, some of it's bad, what can you do? And yeah, the main quest, the storyline at the end bothers me, but otherwise, the cutscenes are so beautiful. The kingdoms, man, the, they actually feel like towns. You can go into the houses, you can break into houses. It's like how the cities in Oblivion are. Not Skyrim. Skyrim had like cities with only a couple of houses. That was garbage. But this game, wow. It, it, this is actually has so many cities. It feels like a, a country you can explore. You have so much nobility. You have peasants begging for money. You have a little bit of everything. This game is just so much fun. It's, it's so, so much fun. The side quests all have unique dialogue. There was one side quest where you take uh, drugs and you go with women into a forest. It's just so weird. Yeah, some of the side quests in this game are some of the weirdest I've encountered. But honestly, this game is like... It's like Oblivion or like The Witcher 3 without the fantasy. And if you want something like that... Like, I don't even... I can't even think of an example of a, of a book or a game that has... That has this kind of a medieval life but without without the magic and fantasy like you know not even game of thrones game of thrones has lots of magic and stuff apparently like uh, you know this game is kind of one of a kind the developers were really gutsy in, in trying to accurately portray medieval europe you know oh so many of these reviewers they're so pissed oh i want diversity in this game i want this i want that but you know as a mixed uh, biracial guy myself like i don't give a shit about diversity i want to i want a game i can immerse myself into a fun game a game that 
you know, can be replayable, a game that will always surprise me, good cutscenes, good polish, th that you spent time making. That's the kind of game I want. I don't want games with these stupid characters put in. Look at the atrocity that was Mass Effect Andromeda. That was, a sh that was a, like, a, I, I, I can't even call it a piece of shit. Because a shit piece of shit is ten times better than what Andromeda was. My god, that killed development studios. Who knows, maybe in a few years, EA will shut down Bioware like they did Visceral. Who knows? But I do know that you should go pay for Kingdom Come Deliverance. Give the developers your money. They deserve it. They worked so hard on the game. And this game, honestly, right now, in 2017, this is one of my Game of the Year contenders, honestly. If you enjoyed watching the content in this video, please consider giving it a like. Also, please consider subscribing to our channel so that you may be the first to receive all of our latest content.